It's tabletop time. I'm Dave, and today we're going to be diving into the 10th edition launch. That's right. What does it mean? What are my predictions for the future? And how does this affect tabletop time? We're going to be doing some really cool stuff around the launch of 10th, and we've got a lot to tell you about that. But first, let's dive straight into the what's happened. I've been around Warhammer for a really long time. I've actually played the game since third edition and marking the beginning of 10, that's pretty much 20 years in the hobby. I did start young, but I do remember the early days fondly. And before we can go into all the stuff that started with 10th edition, I think it's worth having a quick talk about why 9th edition didn't turn out so well. So unless you've been sleeping under the rock, you would have noticed that 10th edition has been announced by Games Workshop. And I'm actually really excited to talk to you all about that. But first, I wanted to talk to you all about 9th edition, the edition of the game we're currently playing. Funnily enough, Tabletop Time actually relaunched basically not long after the hype of 9th edition. I remember getting the Indomitus box, splitting it, giving Rob my Necrons, and starting my Arthurian Primaris Marines. However, I must admit, in my almost 20 years of the hobby, this this edition has probably been my least favorite ever. There are numerous problems with it, including massive amounts of bloat. Well, in general, over the past 12 to 18 months, the situation has gotten a lot better. The way certain factions have been treated, such as Chaos Space Marines getting their 2.0 edition codex, led to me actually not buying the Chaos Codex for the first time in my entire life. It's kind of funny to think 8th edition was originally announced as the last edition. It would be a living edition that Games Workshop wouldn't need to change. And here we are on the cusp of 10th and a lot needs to change. Thankfully, change has been announced. So the announcement of 10th edition means a whole new overhaul. They're actually doing similar to what they did at the start of 8th and removing all codexes initially and returning to index-based rules. And I have to say the first six months after 8th edition came out, the game felt really balanced and was fun to play. So I'm actually pretty hyped for that. The over bloated armor penetration system seems like it's being pulled back a little bit, which I for one think is nice. And another thing is the return of universal special rules. Originally, cited as a reason to make the game simpler, they removed universal special rules in favor of rules in codexes and on data cards. However, ultimately, it seemed pretty clear that the five different types of identical feel no pain saves with different names in different books would just be referred to as feel no pain. It was actually more complicated to learn about your opponent's acidic venom spores than it was to just know they had poison for up. However, 9th edition is already in the past. Let's not talk about 9th, let's talk about 10th. So what is coming in 10th? Well, we have seen that there is a massive release of Tyranids versus new Primaris Marines. And the two big questions on everyone's lips is what does this mean for Primaris Marines and Firstborn? And what new units are we getting? Well, Games Workshop do not show anything in their official releases and trailers unless it's going to get an official model. So the trailers give us a really good indication of some upcoming kits and probably the contents of the 10th edition launch box. Just like the 9th edition launch trailer showcased a whole bunch of new Necron units, there is a range of updated Tyranid designs in this video, as well as a bunch of new Space Marines. Some exciting ones to note are, of course, the Terminators, a Terminator Librarian, a Terminator Captain, as well as what looked to me like some Tyrannic War veterans, probably Stern Guard veterans with Primaris combi weapons. This is exciting to a lot of people. In many ways, the Primaris Marines haven't felt quite like they echo their firstborn kin. A lot of people remember the joy of combi weapons, elites, and special weapons in squads, and Primaris Marines may be moving back towards that. Yep. G'day, g'day. There's nothing more Aussie than a good barbecue, and what better to protect you from the oil splashing up from the delicious meat, no shrimp, on the barbecue, then uh, a tabletop time apron. And if you've ever considered cooking wearing tabletop time merch, there has never been a better time. Head on over to the tabletop time store, www.itstabletoptime.com, and pick up some of our merch. Consider your oil splash resistant apron today. And uh, enjoy your barbecuing. Now, as promised, I do want to give you some of my predictions. For some credibility, as I said, I've been in the hobby 20 years, but a lot of people have. I've also run a game store for eight. I've been central in conversations for many, many years about this game, about a lot of people in love with the hobby. I've watched the product releases very keenly and I've seen the pattern. And I have to say, while I may well be very incorrect 
on this in the long run. I predicted when 8th edition launched that we would see the death of Firstborn Marines and I still think that's what's going to happen long term. So it seems that the new Primaris Terminators have been announced as being both Terminators and Primaris Terminators. They're interchangeable. I think that's the first indication that we're starting to see the lore be used as an excuse for the new reign. I have a prediction that over the next edition and I believe I said many years ago and my friends will be able to check me on this that by 10th edition would be when we actually started to see the full replacement of Firstborn Marines. I think this is it. A lot of people are seeing this as the herald of them living side by side, but I kind of see this as the herald of them being amalgamated. We'll see those original Firstborn kits start to disappear. As soon as there's Primaris Stern Guard veterans, we'll see Stern Guard veterans fade away. And we'll start to see most of the range being represented by Primaris equivalents to old kits and the older kits just slowly going the way of the dinosaur. Now, I'm not judging this. I'm not saying if it's good or bad, but I do think it's what's realistic. I don't think we're going to see a swathe of remakes of classic kits. There was no way they weren't going to make Terminators and they couldn't really update the iconic design too much. So this feels a bit like a concession unit where they can keep the design, say it's first one, say it's Primaris and rules wise, it's not gonna make a difference. But when it comes to specific kits that are represented elsewhere, like a new Primaris Stern Guard squad next to the old Stern Guard squad, I think we'll start to see the old one now this isn't going to be comfortable news for a lot of people, but I think the writing's on the wall. This has always been Games Workshop's way to make people buy a whole new Space Marine army, and they're only going to be held back by a classic aesthetic for so long. Over the last six years since the launch of Primaris Marines, imagine how many new people have gotten into the hobby and collect nothing but them. With things like a big TV show and Space Marine 2 coming out, many more are going to be introduced to the game. And they'll only recognize the firstborn designs as relics of a bygone era, much the same as many of you look at rogue trader models. It's things like the Redemptor Dreadnought announced with the twin last cannon and rocket launcher from the trailer, clearly aping the design of the classic Dreadnought that just makes me know for sure that the classic Dreadnought is going to go bye-bye. There is no way we're gonna see three Redemptor Dreadnought lines that perfectly emulate every loadout that can be had in the classic Dreadnought and still keep that kit around. It's just not gonna happen. So my major prediction is this marks the beginning of the end for Firstborn. Enjoy your models while you can and as with every edition launch, we will see models disappear as soon as the codexes start to arrive. So not the indexes. The, the indexes will likely cover the full spread of models in rules, including Forge World models. However, as soon as books start coming out, that support historically has faded away. Forge World support for models for the last edition has been abysmal, some of the worst I've ever seen. And in fact, the compendiums that came out in 8th edition haven't been updated in years, aside from extremely minor FAQs to tweak some keywords and make things useful. In terms of balance, it's been left largely abandoned. As for the Tyranids, only good things ahead. The Tyranid range, I believe, is getting an entirely full revamp. And my suspicion would be that aside from the kits released around, I believe, 2014 or 15, the Venom Thrope and the new Zuan Thropes, a few of those kits. Aside from those kits, I believe the entire Tyranid range is going to be completely revamped. So it's an exciting time, much like the Necrons, where 80% of their model kits are going to be replaced, and it's for the better. One of the last great old factions in terms of most of their model range, so it'll be really good to see the Tyranids charge into the future. Another major bit of news is, of course, the Lion is back, awake from his 10,000 years of slumber. Now, everyone's keen to know how that's going to work, and uh, I certainly am as well. What's he been doing, just reading books for 10,000 years? It'll be interesting to see how they justify his absence, because his lack of action is more glaring than his sudden action in terms of the impact on the Imperium. However, I do think they chose the Lion for a reason. I think it's pretty clear how things are set up for 10th edition. We have a a massive Tyranid invasion coming in from the other side of the galaxy. Gulliman, who's been fighting the Indominus Crusade across the Great Rift into Imperium Nihilus, will need to be withdrawn. And I believe the Lion will be basically ruling the other side of the Empire, fighting the Crusade on the east that Gulliman cannot. This sets up a really good dynamic as Gulliman and the Lion have always had differing views on how to rule an Empire and really who should have been Warmaster or Regent of the Imperium. Both of them are headstrong tacticians. And while Gulliman is a statesman, 
Huntsman, best suited to ruling the Imperium Sanctus and dealing with the High Lords of Terror with his peerless diplomatic skills. The Lion is more of a taciturn military leader, and I think that will be super appropriate on the eastern fringe of the galaxy and up in Imperial Nihilus, where he doesn't have to coy toy to others and needs to rule with genius tactics and martial prowess. Now those two predictions could be shown to be completely wild and completely thrown out. Time will tell. But I do think it goes without saying that what's going to happen is the good guys are going to whip the bad guys because that's what always happens. Vashtor's plan is possibly going to be foiled. I'm a little unclear on this. Have one other sneaky prediction. I actually think 10th edition is going to see the return of the Lost and the Damned or the Renegades and Heretics. We have started to see from Blackstone Fortress to now basically a digital model library of chaos related models. We have Chaos Beastmen, we have Traitor Guard, Traitor Ogrens, Traitor Com Commissars, the Mega Vault Cultists from Blackstone Fortress, a whole bunch of designs. And while many may never be touched on again, I have a suspicion that we're slowly building up this kind of lost in the damned warp fueled cultists list. I don't know when it's going to happen or how, but I could see Vashtor as being an empowered Lord of War equivalent god character that leads that faction if he succeeds in his plan. Although with the way things have been going in the law books, that doesn't look too like. Now that's my predictions out of the way and we now have a little bit of 10th to talk about. What does 10th mean? What's 10th going to look like? What does it mean for you and what does it mean for us? Well, they've announced the 10th edition is all about simplifying the game without making it simple. And I have to say from everything they've shown us, I'm really excited. They've really toned down the AP system by the sounds of it and increasing the toughness on vehicles to make them feel a bit more tanky is a welcome change. Also, the data sheets that they're placing everything onto are really easy to read and keeping the unit's abilities entirely constrained to the data sheet is gonna be really nice for play. It actually works amazingly well in Age of Sigma and it should work really well for 40K too. Now, Games Workshop's track record is pretty clear on this. They launch games strong and then they taper off or bloat out over the course of them. So I anticipate that the start of 10th edition are probably gonna be some of the funnest games of 40K you play in a while. Now it may be that one or two things are, are broken and if you play with the kind of players who exploit that for their fun and not yours, you might have a few dodgy games. But broadly when the indexes came out in 8th, aside from the flavor being reduced, the games were actually pretty balanced. There were no OP stratagems, not many people had access to anything that kind of broke the game. And broadly casual games were super fun. So I'm really hoping that this new index 10th edition is going to be exactly the same and I'm going to get to have a lot of fun games with my friends. Now another thing that's been simplified is army building. Games Workshop have stated that instead of worrying about four sword slots, units are just gonna be either troops, leaders, or not troops or leaders. And you can take zero to three options of each with up to six of individual troops. However, a lot of them are going to have special abilities that can only be used once per turn, regardless of how many squads you have. This means you're gonna be incentivized to take diverse armies with lots of models without being heavily punished if you don't do so. I think this is a great idea and I'm really looking forward to seeing some really diverse armies on the table, also then restricted and forced to be a certain way. It also feels a lot like Age of Sigma army construction and I wouldn't be surprised if we see the unit's special weapons all rolled into the unit's cost and the units purchased in much the same way as Age of Sigma. A section at the back of your book with a whole roster of units you can purchase and buy multiples of for some or not for others. Some other major changes to 10th edition, the psychic phase has gone the way of the dinosaur as well and will instead be represented through some abilities you can use and also powerful shooting attacks you can unlock for your psychics. The morale phase is also gone and we're introducing the battle shock phase or battle shock tests at least. Now this term will be familiar to those who play Age of Sigma. But what is refreshing is they've announced models won't be removed from failing these checks. Your units will just be deeper. I personally love this. I love the idea of my traitor guardsmen sitting around being rattled in trenches as they constantly fail morale checks and firing shots over the top rather than just having a rough check and removing half my squad with a shrug. It's never really fun to lose models to these morale checks but I'm totally okay with debuffs and the thematic flavor of my army falling apart around me as they fail morale checks across the board. They've also announced a massive shrinkage of stratagems with universal stratagems available and then just six available per sub-faction as well as a much reduced pool of command points. They haven't explained exactly how this will work, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they follow the tremendously good system from Age of Sigma, where basically you get an allotment of these points every turn based on whether you're the active player or not and whether your warlord is alive. This refreshing small pool of points allows you to use a few reactionary stratagems every single turn of the game, but prevents you from dumping eight stratagems into one mega do or die attack, which is really not that fun for anyone, unless that's your third and shouldn't be your third. endless 
cacophony of literators, anyone. You can tell I haven't played much, no. Another big announcement for 10th is probably one I'm the most excited about. It's Combat Patrol. Combat Patrol is returning, but specifically, these games are slightly simplified versions of 40K, but playable with the contents of a Combat Patrol box. In particular, I'm excited about this because the contents of the launch Astra Militarum box are the same as the Astra Militarum Combat Patrol, which means I just have to finish that box of Trader Guard and I have a fully playable box out of the army to teach people how to play, try new things and have a bunch of fun. This is super cool. It's a great way to get people into the hobby. And as a store owner, it's a really great incentive to have people try new armies, be able to actually get a playable force and have some fun games really early on. So I think this is a great initiative and it's one I think we're gonna see a lot of fun with. But what does all this mean for us? Well, for tabletop time and for you, our viewers, why am I talking so much about 10th edition? Well, it's our first 40K edition launch ever as a channel. So honestly, we're excited. While the trendy thing is to be hating on Games Workshop all the time, Jen, Murray, and myself all love the Games Workshop IP. I grew up with it and they make cool models and we like the cool models and it's okay to be enthusiastic about the game you love every now and then, especially when it's getting a much needed refresh because honestly, 9th edition has, for me personally, sucked. So I'm really hopeful 40K gets back to a place we can enjoy and everyone here at Table to Time are actually really hopeful of that. We're feeling a thrill to actually play games of 40K again, not just paint models, and we're really looking forward to building up towards 10. So I can announce something. That's right, the long, long awaited battle reports are back. Back you say? But when, Dave? Well, there's the foil. So Jen and I are actually, as of tomorrow when this video comes out, flying to Japan for 17 days. That means we're gonna be out of action and Murray and Jazza are gonna be holding up the fort for a while. Don't be surprised if you see us in videos. Filming schedules mean that we actually filmed a collab video with Squidmart ages ago. That's yet to come out. I'm not sure where everything will come out. But by and large, we can't advance the battle reports too much over the April period. But we can announce that the Age of Sigma battle report we had filmed is now actively being edited again. And the aim is to have that finished, voice acted and post-produced. Fingers crossed by the end of April. And if not in April, definitely in May. We will get it done. And after that, we will have streamlined our process. And our plan is by the launch of 10th edition to be able to create regular battle reports on the channel in the same style as we did for our much loved Kill Team battle report. Narrative characters with portraits, voice over silliness, special effects, and a real focus on the narrative of the game. And uh, everyone here is really excited that that's finally starting to get back on track. We know you've been super patient on the battle reports and we're super thankful for it, but really it has been something we just haven't been able to work on. We've had this huge battle report that we kind of went all out on and then uh, realized we had no time to edit it because we still make two videos a week. And then there was a bunch of production gremlins and really uh, we're just now getting back to a point where we can do that. And with 10th edition launching a full Tyranid range revamp, that means Murray's Tyranids are coming back whether he likes it or not. He likes it, pro tip, he likes it. So Murray's Tyranids will be coming back. He'll be building up a combat patrol, hopefully, of Tyranids, although probably made up of the new models, not the current combat patrol that's got the old models in it. Jen will be finishing her Sisters of Battle combat patrol and I will be creating my Traitor Guard combat patrol. You'll see some more of these videos starting to come out as we get closer to 10th edition of us getting these armies ready, some really cool battle reports. We'll probably start with combat patrol. It's nice bite-sized and we can try out that new system for you. Now we will be a little bit behind other creators. Why? Well, we're in Australia and we actually don't have a relationship with Games Workshop. We haven't signed any contracts and we don't get sent any product whatsoever. So we'll be buying the 10th edition launch box just like the rest of you as it stands right now, which means it will take us a few weeks to get that all ready to play after the edition launches. Either way, I hope that you're as excited as I am for the new edition and you realize it's okay to be excited about something you love, but also critical of it because it's been awful. So we're super keen to get into 10th. I hope that's given you a bit of an update of everything that is not only happening at the studio, but also what's happened with 10th and my prediction. This video was super weird and super outside the usual. I didn't expect to be making an Eons of Battle style talk to camera video and I don't anticipate we'll be doing them often, but with such a big special thing as the launch of a new edition of 40K that only happens once every three 
three years. We would be remiss if we didn't talk about it. So thank you if you have stayed with me for all of this time for this video. I hope you've enjoyed talk it. Talk to us in the comments because uh, we'd love to hear what kind of content you want. Are we a voice you'd like to hear from or do you just want to see us craft stuff? Yeah, maybe you just want us to shut up and don't care about what we think about 40K. I don't know. Thank you so much for watching and thank you very much to all our Patreon because our Patreons allow us to make all this content. They're the people who are going to help us uh, buy that launch box of 10th edition. It ain't going to be cheap down under. I'm thinking like 400 bucks probably. It's going to be crazy. Maybe 350. I don't know. I don't know. But we're still going to buy it because it's really it's going to be cool. And smash that like button if you want to see Dark Mechanicus or Renegades of the Lost and Damned come back to 40k. If you don't, don't smash that like button. That'll show them. And that's it. That's the video. So I'm going to throw this 9th edition book in the old trash. Not because I'm one of those people who thinks that when a new edition comes out, you have to throw your books away and you can't play them anymore. You can keep playing them. But why would why would I want to play 9th? It sucks. I'd rather play Horus Heresy or Age of Sigma or Kill Team or Warhammer Underworlds or Warcry or Aeronautica or Imperialis or Adeptus Titanicus or pretty much any game Games Workshop produces instead of 40k or play Test Rules for 40k 10th edition or Drop Zone Commander or Robotech mm. or Battletech or Drop Fleet Commander or Halo Wars even though it's out of production or Infinity or Carnivale or Malifaux or Blood Bowl or that weird White Dwarf game they came out with like five years ago when Knights launched that's basically Knight versus Knight and you can like blow each other's bits off. It's kind of like Battletech or that or Tic-Tac-Toe or Bowling, 10-pin Bowling. I don't know, Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. Yeah. Just not ninth.